This is how Prema Francis begins her day, getting her grandson Prince ready for school. She's raised him ever since his mother, a school dropout, moved away for work. Prema also didn't get the chance to go to school. But she wants to make sure Prince does. The eight-year-old studies at a prestigious private school in Delhi. It costs more than 1,200 euros a year, a huge financial burden for Prema, who works as a maid. Her husband is a chauffeur. She's taken out loans to cover the school fees. And she's determined to make it work. In this private school, there's a good environment for Prince. He learns good values there. The teachers are good, the toilets are clean. Prince learns to read and write in English. We want him to work in an office someday and have a better life. He shouldn't end up doing what we do for a living. Prima's aspirations are a familiar theme in India. Many families like hers see private schools as the path to success and social mobility. But getting into these schools isn't easy. They're dominated by children from wealthy families. Private schools like these are highly coveted across India, though they charge exorbitant fees. The alternative government-funded schools are free of cost, but they suffer from teacher absences, poor infrastructure and a lack of facilities. The ruling party in Delhi is trying to bridge that gap. The Aam Admi Party, or Common Man's Party, is holding a rally in East Delhi. Education is a central campaign issue. The party says it's transformed public schools in the capital since it came to power in 2013 and has succeeded in creating a more level playing field. The government's work on education seems to have paid off. At this public school, admissions are full. The Delhi government says it's built 8,000 new classrooms and is constructing another 12,000. It's trained thousands more teachers and started special classes for children falling behind, many of them first-generation learners. Lessons begin with happiness classes, meditation exercises to beat stress and start the day on a positive note. For Manish Sisodia, Delhi's education minister, money is a big part of the solution. Spending on education now accounts for 26% of Delhi's annual budget. But he admits that changing attitudes towards public schooling is an uphill task. Status symbol is another problem. Many times people come to me, they want my favor to get their word admitted into some good private school. Like many of the parents are worried that if we send our kids to government school, we don't know what would be their future. First of all, we have to make sure quality is there. Once quality is there, we can change that mindset also. Back at Prema's home, that's already beginning to happen. Her granddaughter, Manyata, also moved in with her a few months ago. Prema has heard about the improved public schools in the city. She's now considering sending Manyata to one of them. From Delhi, I'm joined now by DW Sonia Falnikar, who put that report together for us. Good morning, Sonia. Uh, education, as we saw there, is a, a top priority in Delhi, the Indian capital. Has it been a, a major issue in this general election nationwide? Well, no, the answer is uh, no. You know, I mean, the, the party that rules Delhi, the Aam Admi Party, is really one of the few issues-based party in India. You know, it stormed to power in 2013 uh, on the back of an anti-corruption uh, movement. And since then, it has carried out a lot of work in the field of public education and uh, healthcare. And it's really rattled a lot of mainstream parties with its appeal to kind of middle-class urban voters. But, you know, elsewhere in this election, we really haven't seen this issue being taken up. There's a lot of noise and rhetoric around things like nationalism, things like national security, but it's drowned out more substantive issues like jobs and education. You know, as you reported, uh, Sonia, quality education is out of reach for so many in India. How much is this responsible for perpetuating high levels of economic inequality? Well, there is, you know, there is a stark divide across India between public education and private education. So, you know, those that can afford it send, send their children to, to a good um, 
private school, those who can't are stuck with you know, inferior uh, state-run um, education. So, so that uh, does remain a, a big problem. Now, there are some attempts um, have been made to kind of address these inequalities. In 2012, uh, India passed a law that requires private schools to reserve a certain number of seats, to, to offer a certain quota uh, of its seats to, to children from you know, poor economic backgrounds. Uh, that sounds very good uh, on paper, but in reality, it's a very bureaucratic system, very difficult to navigate. And, and these kinds of inequalities are also seen in higher education, you know, in colleges and universities, where on the one hand, you have kind of elite uh, universities like the Indian Institutes of Management and Technology. Uh, and on the other hand, you have, you know, millions of students who go to kind of inf vastly inferior uh, colleges and, and universities, where the emphasis is still very much on cramming, on rote learning, mm. uh, on silent note taking, um, really at the expense of analysis and, and critical thinking. Okay, is the government under any kind of pressure to change or at least address these, these inequalities in education? Well, you know, more than half of India's population is under the age of 25. And these people require jobs. They face a big jobs crisis. But in a sense, they also face a big education crisis because, you know, quality of education remains a big problem in India. And that is one of the biggest hurdles in, in these young people um, getting good enough jobs. You know, employers in India often talk about how fresh graduates lack, uh, you know, basic skills like good communication, a good command of English, um, the ability to, you know, think independently and assess problems. So I think there is certainly pressure on the government to, to change that. Sonia Falnikar for us. Uh, Sonia, thanks very much for coming in this morning and for your report as well.